five my mom had a boyfriend that turned into a stalker his name is Dave Kuster um, Dave Kuster once uh, was my mom was in stores or at home trying to get in her car he'd remove his spark plugs from the car vehicle his disarm the vehicle so she couldn't leave she couldn't leave she couldn't leave and then he would scare her or traumatize her very badly um one day in particular, when I was five, Dave Kuster um, kidnapped me. He took me away. She grabbed me and ran for my mom. She scrambled for me for a bit, but she couldn't keep up. He grabbed me and threw me in a car and abducted me, kidnapped me. He kept me in his vehicle for seven days. I couldn't see it over the dashboard. He uh, punched me with all his might. Punch me, all his might. Punch me, all his might. Every time I looked over at him. So I feared looking over at him after a while. I sold my pants and I peed myself and I had no food for seven days. He kept me in that car. He went around, drove around and sold drugs and whatnot. And for those seven days, you know, many cops came looking for me? Five-year-old missing. None were called. Either I'm not important enough or, I don't know, none were called. No one lived for me. No one lived for me. No one to help little Ben. No one to help little Ben. No one to help little Ben. I was left to be kidnapped by a man that my mother had a protection order against, a no contact order against for him to herself to keep herself safe, but I myself did not have one nor to have anyone that cared enough to send anyone looking for me. It took seven days, and they brought me back and dropped me off. And that was that. That was that. One time my mom was babysitting me in my grandparents' house when they went home. We're home. We're home. I was just being a kid. Full energy. Trying to show mom, hey mom, look at this. Hey mom, look at this. Hey mom, look at this. She hit me so hard. My head hit the floor. Right as my grandparents walked around the corner. And my grandmother, my savior, says, Jane, Kathleen, if you ever touch that boy again, I'll take him so fast your head will spin. She left. My grandparents raised me. Ben Shelley. <laughs> I've seen God four times. One time was at a festival in Fort Quarters, Arizona. It was a rainbow family gathering regionals. Gathering regionals. Gathering regionals. I showed up with a friend. <laughs> Quite a car we drove there. Our friends left three days before. They left to go to this festival. They asked invited me to come in their car. I declined the invitation. But three days, four days passed, and I'm thinking to myself, well, shoot, I wish I had gone. I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> so me and my friend who go unnamed bought a car for $20. And then we brought the Scamp, which is the name of the car. I'm like, kid you not. I kid you not. I kid you not. The scamp. We drove it to uh, Arizona. But let me tell you a little bit about the scamp. Alright. The scamp. You went into the vehicle through the passenger side. The driver's side was smashed in. Okay. There's no interior lights in the car. To see a speedometer? No. So we cracked glow sticks and put them on the dash. My partner that was driving with me couldn't look at the dashboard and see a speed speedometer and drive at the same time. So he relied upon me to tell him how fast he was going at all times. So my shift of sleeping was not had. <laughs> uh, next, the car. We started from under the hood. 
with a screwdriver. And then we jump inside and we go. Because if you stop and don't show it in neutral, the car dies. And then again, we open the hood, start a screwdriver, and keep it going. After a while, we're driving down the freeway and our hood goes, <laughs> blind sighting us, no crack underneath it at all. Just totally can't see a thing on the freeway, going fast. So we pull over, duct tape the hood down. After we start it up again with a screwdriver, and then we go. Only every stop sign you come to, that same car, the Scamp, we had to shift it into neutral and rev it, keep it alive, keep it going, from stalling. And uh, then unduct tape the hood, start it up, and duct tape it again. <laughs> we also ended up getting into a four hour, four hour, four hour traffic jam in Salt Lake City, where we had to each time the car dies, unduct tape it, start the car. Got to get back down, get in the car. <laughs> Four and a half hours of driving like that. Um, my friend ended up driving us off a ravine. We did a 360 off a ravine, in which when we landed, all four tires buckled. The radiator cracked. And it was like giant bags of dirt were thrown in our faces when we landed. We were scrolling on the seat and screaming the whole way through the air. <laughs> <laughs> it took two tow trucks, two tow trucks to get it out of there. And we first hit the ground down the ravine. And me and my friend, we grab our bags as fast as we can, run up to the road, get your way out of there. The cop pulls over. Police officer pulls out and says, What's going on? You always have a wreck? And we're like, We're trying to get out of here. He said, You need to stay here for the tow truck, figure some stuff out. So we waited for the tow truck. Once he got there, though, we convinced him that we were good and talked to the tow truck. We got this taken care of. He had another call, so we left. The tow truck started trying to get the car out of the ditch as me and my friend tried to get out of there. The tow truck doesn't like this. He uh, flashes a weapon at us, tells us to sit in his trunk of the bed of his um, car, his truck. So truck in the cab. So we did. This man was big. And they tried to get it to the car out of the ravine. Ended up calling another tow truck because it took two tow trucks to get us out of the ravine. And once they got us out of the ravine, they hauled our scamp to a car lot. And we had no money at all. And they sat in the office and began repairing the car. About three hours passed. Comes the time to talk about financial. We said to them, well, geez, we don't have any money for the tow, nor the repair, nor any of the things you've done for us. We we're very sorry. We we're just trying to get where we're going. They said, what? No, 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 no money? So yeah, we have no money. I'm sorry. And we said to them then, you can keep the car for payment if you want it. And now the car's fixed. They said, we don't want that car in our parking lot. Get the hell out of here. Just get out of here. So we drove on. Me and my friend got pulled over 14 times on the way down to Arizona. Oh, every time they let us go. And actually, a few times they said, don't let us stop you in the same county. <laughs> Although in Ogden, Utah, which I am now banned from, from a story, I am now banned from, from a story, banned from, from a story, banned from, from a story, I'm about to tell you. Ogden, Utah, I'm banned because they pull us over. We had marijuana on us. But they first said to us, and they walked with the car. Again, this car's beat up and not safe for the road. They said, is everything on the dashboard yours? And my friend said, Yes. They said uh, the sunglasses, the uh, gum, cigarettes, and all that stuff. We said, yes, of course it is. Of course it's ours. We're 18. It's all good. 
Well, in Ogden, Utah, you gotta be 19 to have smoked cigarettes. They said they arrested us with cigarettes, and they find a marijuana. They throw it on the ground, and they have me rub it into my foot. My friend gets out of the car and says, Dude, and the officer grabs my hand, twists her back, arm back like this. He goes, First off, it's officer, not dude. <laughs> they cuff him and throw him in the back of the car, semi cuffed on the curb. They're talking to us for a while, and they say, So where are you headed? And I said, Remember, remember gathering regional? And I said, What's that where a bunch of hippies get high together? I said, No. So we get together and feed the homeless. That is the true nature was about. And then they talk about cutting the seats up, bringing dogs in. After about 45 minutes of me talking to them, they secure, an, uh, they secure a convoy out of town, four cop cars, and a sheriff. All lead us in our car out of town. No arrests, no fines, no fees. On the way out of town, though, or has any more glow sticks to be able to see at nighttime. So I stopped at Walmart <laughs> and they waited for me outside in their cop cars. I got my glow sticks, got back in the car and they escorted us out of town. And that's why I cannot go back to Ogden, Utah. <laughs> also another thing, that car had headlights. We drove for four days and four, three nights. And to drive, we had to just hug the car ahead of us really close so we could see. <laughs> what a time. We got to the Rainbow Gate Regional Gatherings, and we did it in three and a half days, four days of driving straight from Gig Harbor to Four Corners, Arizona. We made it. And they impounded the car there. At the gathering, lots of things happened. One of the things is I saw God. I walked around for a while at the, at the gathering. My friend took off. I had nobody there. I was all alone. I'm walking around saying, Dose me, dose me, dose me. Dose me, dose me, dose me. And I took three different kinds of acid by doing that for free. And they say if you mix acid that you just have a bad trip, guaranteed. I had three, in half an hour, I had three different kinds of acid six cups of Kamenzi tea, and three peyote buttons, and three cups of peyote tea. <laughs> I saw God all right. <laughs> ben Shelley, putting it out there.